Long ago, before this day's confusion did begin Throughout the stars did we go wandering Distance was no barrier And time it had no hope Free to come and free to go Free to come and free to go Open up the book The book of stars everyone and welcome to Karmic Evolutions Astrologically Speaking. I'm your host Sherry Horn Hassan of Karmic Evolution Astrology and I'm coming to you on April 22nd, 2021 from Contact Talk Radio. Just a quick reminder that this show aims to bring you the truth about astrology and your soul's karmic evolution. Before I get into this week's astro news use uh, astro news you can use I'm going to bore you yet again with some of my usual housekeeping, and that is just to remind you that you can check out my Karmic Evolution Facebook page posts on the current astrological energies happening each week, along with my new and full moon posts, and that um, you can also sign up there for my weekly newsletter uh, called Conversations About Consciousness. You can just go to the left-hand side of my Facebook page at Karmic Evolution for Your Soul. Scroll down until you hit join email list and uh, it's, uh, it's simple. So um, also, if you miss any shows or you want to re-listen to a particular one, just go to my website at karmicevolution.com, hit the radio show um, line up on the upper right-hand corner of the banner and scroll down that page and you'll find all of the archived recordings from all of my past shows. And finally, um, whether you're tired of hearing it or not, I am still offering my one-hour Karmic Evolution Natal Insight reading to my listeners for only $99. Now, um, you know, if you're looking to learn your soul's true purpose and mission in this lifetime, to talk about past life karma and how specific emotional and energetic past life karmic patterns might be holding you back now and what are your major strengths and drawbacks when it comes to relationships career finances health or any other you know issues in your life that are of interest to you um again i'll read my little ad and then tell you how you can contact me so do you want to gain gain greater consciousness about your soul's true mission and purpose in this lifetime Move from chaos to clarity in your relationships, career, finances, health. Heal old karmic wounds and co-create your own future happiness and success. Awaken to your true potential and highest destiny in this lifetime. Well, that's easy. When you take advantage of my special discounted offer for, offer for listeners, a one-hour karmic evolution natal insight reading for only $99. Simply email me at Sherry, that's S-H-E-R-I, at karmicevolution.com and book your reading today. At almost half the regular price, conscious awareness has never been so easy or so affordable. Okay, so um, I have no guests today. It's just me solo, and I have a lot to say, so um, sorry, but I'll be re re reinstituting interviews shortly, so hang in there. But let's talk about this week's Astro News You Can Use. So the monthly lunar cycle is still waxing this week until we get to the Scorpio full moon on April 26th. So I'm going to talk more about that in a few. But first, we may remember that Mercury and then the sun moved out of Aries and into Taurus earlier this week on Monday, April 19th. And there they joined Venus and Uranus already in Taurus as we shift from Aries instinctive, inspirational and initiative energy to a more grounded, earthy, predictable, and dependable one. Therefore, it's a good time to do the fixed work 
around whatever ideas inspired us while the sun journeyed through Aries, and especially when we planted that new seed at April 11th's Aries new moon. Now, at that lunation, if you recall, we had several waxing squares to Pluto um, just following this lunation. So the first one was uh, uh, Venus square Pluto, which happened just a few hours after the lunation on um, April 11th. The second one was the moon squared Pluto, and that's a fleeting, you know, uh, energy on April 12th. Then the sun squared Pluto on April 16th, and finally Mercury squared Pluto April 17th. So these all occurred in cardinal signs from Aries to Capricorn, which tells us that whatever new seed we planted then, it was one that required us to push through any internal obstacles, that's Pluto, to evolving our consciousness in the case of Venus square Pluto, around our values, um, our persona and ego orientation, in the case of the sun square, and the way we perceive and process information, and that's Mercury square. The message here was one of evolution in consciousness. These squares reminded us that growing in consciousness includes gathering knowledge around whether we feel internally empowered or disempowered. And those are really my key words when it comes to Pluto, empowerment and evolution. While all of us have stories that differ in their particular details, many of our life stories illustrate that we're heroes in our own specific individual hero's journey. This is what I believe, at least. So while for some of us, the journey might be about developing a greater sense of faith that the universe, and whether that's God, goddess, creator, source, what have you, always has our back, even if that sometimes seems not to be the case. For others, it's simply a more specific journey around increasing our sense of self-worth or allowing us to trust our own intuition and internal guidance system rather than listening always to that the, the, the advice or the beliefs or the demands of others. So what I'm mentioning here are merely overall big picture themes that boil down to how our souls have been conditioned both earlier in this lifetime and in past lives to believe things about ourselves or others that our soul, deep down inside, the soul's wisdom knows, really are not true. So empowering ourselves to believe in ourselves and in the process to have compassion for ourselves becomes the journey of so many of us humans. So even those who overdo quote, believing in themselves, for example, those who seem to have it all together or who arrogantly lord power over others are usually simply revealing to us how disempowered they really are. Now, I'm not talking about people who have become more enlightened and really have become more empowered. I'm talking about people who are illustrating to us just how disempowered they really are because they need to control or, or uh, disempower others, right? And as my mother used to say, um, a superiority complex is simply an inferiority complex turned inside out. And I love that. Thank you, Mom. Anyway, so becoming more empowered through taking some sort of action or allowing ourselves to become inspired to plan taking an action was the name of the game at the last Aries New Moon. And once again, this doesn't mean the action was meant to be completed then. It means just what I've said, that planting a seed that leads to the fertilization and or the gestation of an idea or plan um, to which at some point in the future, and that will most likely happen around the Libra full moon on October 20th of this year, um, that's when we will give birth. That's when the harvest will come, okay? So meanwhile, back to the energies this week leading up to Scorpio's full moon, April 26th, and that includes today's April 22nd Venus-Uranus meetup or conjunction which may cause minor disruptions to our daily routine. So it pays to expect the unexpected now. However, any disruptions to our day may well serve the purpose of breaking up our more boring routine and introducing a little excitement into our day. So if you're listening to this recording after the fact, check back to see if anything unusual happened, and you'll be better able to connect the dots. Um, you know, it could be something as simple as uh, someone says, hey, let's order out Ethiopian food today instead of... Uh, just having, you know, the regular Chinese or um, diner omelet or whatever, you know. Um, and because Venus is about values and Uranus about disruption, 
and Taurus about what pleases our senses, this conjunction may well bring some revelations, profound or not, again, it's a fleeting energy, about what truly makes us feel good right now. Um, and, you know, um, we do that through the excitement of breaking our usual routine. And if nothing happens, we might be feeling a little irritable instead, which is an indication that we're refusing to acknowledge that even a minor change might prove beneficial right now because in the end, it actually is going to make us feel more alive. Right? So here's the interesting part. Because Mercury and Venus never run too far from the sun, Mercury's always within a 28 degree orb of the sun at any given moment while Venus stays within a 45 degree range. That's why they're known as personal planets. They, they, uh, they, they run with the sun. We'll see the same kind of repetition of these conjunctions to Uranus. So Mercury follows Venus to conjoin Uranus late tomorrow on April 23rd or early on the 24th, depending on your time zone. And the Taurus sun will follow suit, but not until a week later on April 30th. So we can see how Uranus is being hit three times in a week with the Scorpio full moon in the middle. And it's our job now to decipher the meaning as it relates to each of us personally. We know that for some of us, these aspects will resonate more clearly than for others, depending on the house in which it occurs and if these conjunctions happen on or near any planets or angles or other sensitive points in our individual charts. In general, however... Venus conjunct Uranus makes us aware of any need to bring into conscious awareness that some of our old patterns around what we used to value may now need to be brought up to date. We're slowly climbing out of the abyss of the, of the past year's pandemic, which I believe has changed the value system of many. Um, I think I mentioned this last week, but I think it bears reiterating, especially with this uh, upcoming aspect. While grandparents, parents, and children have always valued relationships with each other, in healthy families at least, the ability to move freely and interact through physical touch, through hugs, kisses, or holding our loved ones close, takes on more import right now. Um, so now that we're allowed to do that, those of us who've been vaccinated, the moment we make contact with another that we've been estranged from for so long, may have far greater and more immeasurable impact on and import to us now and eclipse what we thought was of greater value before. And in doing so, we gain a newfound appreciation of what really matters most to us in life. Now, when Mars moves into sensitive cancer, also tomorrow on April 23rd, which is where he'll remain until June 11th, we're urged to trust our gut about that which we'd like to initiate now. We may learn more about our own sensitivity during this period and how that factors into our decisions and actions going forward. My experience has been that far too many people, myself included, <laughs> fail to acknowledge the strength of our own intuition and instead doubt it, second guess it, or naysay and dismiss it instead. So Mars transiting through this moon-ruled sign of mother Family, nurturing, security, habit, the past, roots, and tradition can cause us to feel more protective of family and those whom we nurture. And in doing so, one of the downsides of cancer energy is that we may deflect attention away from ourselves by placing it on taking care of others. I mean, if you're really truly hurt, you don't want to expose yourself to others and let them see you're hurt. You hide it away, right? And and one of the best ways to do that is saying, oh, you need help. Let me help you. Or, oh, I can't deal with my own hurt right now. I've got to go to my mom. She needs my assistance. You know, she's elderly now. Or I need to give the aid a break. Or, you know, um, my kids need a, 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 someone to watch the, the babies or whatever, you know, whatever stage of life we're at. I'm obviously reflecting back to you through my own stage of life. But, uh, but we all, you know, tend to... Um, put aside our own needs. So this transit of Mars through Cancer reminds us that initiating or practicing self-care and self-nurturing now, excuse me, will allow us to better nurture others. It's a healer, heal thyself first kind of energy in that we must put our own oxygen mask on first 
if we hope to survive long enough to be able to take care of and potentially save others. And as I said, it's when we hide our own emotional sensitivity, including, of course, any deep gut-level devastating hurt, that sends us inward into our cave of solitude from which we won't emerge until we feel the coast is clear. Like the child who, when upset, bottles up her emotions and retreats into her cave where she can safely sulk, whine, and slowly recover, she ain't coming back out again until she feels 100% safe. So it, motiva- it pays for us to motivate ourselves to move inward now particularly through meditation and being around water to discover cancer, of course, is a water sign to discover whether our psychological patterns and the defense mechanisms we've been conditioned to fall back on when we experience hurt truly serve us as mature adults. So rather than Mars remaining stymied from taking action by the acute nature of our pain, whether that's something that happens in the now or some pain that we've been carrying for a long time, we're called during Mars transit through moon-ruled cancer, which uh, which is also, you know, the moon rules the fourth house in the natural chart, which is a psychological house, because it's what we experienced in the family growing up, what we were conditioned, and that's why habit is part of the, the um, archetype of the moon and moon-ruled cancer. We habitually have a fallback uh, reaction or action. And um, this is asking us now, Mars going through cancer, to slow down, which is antithetical, right, to, to Mars action, and recognize where our emotional sensitivities lie and what happens when they're triggered. And again, and as always, meditation, especially moving meditation, say walking on the beach or near water right now, can lead to things like journaling our thoughts, about an alternative way to deal with our pain moving forward. Mercury now will follow in Venus's footsteps and meet Uranus also on April 23rd, a little later in the day, which may continue to spark deep revelatory insights about how we truly feel and how we might increase our future sense of emotional security through a greater understanding of what's of, you know, what's really of import to us now. So this is a bit of a frenetic energy and thoughts and ideas may arrive rapidly. So it's important to make sure we test those ideas without or before we simply accept them or embrace them fully, right? It's because it's true, our ideas may well be original and unique and particularly as reflected through Uranian themes, which are science, technology, and metaphysical realms, particularly astrology. Uranus is the planet of astrology. But hasty or scattered thinking can promote anxiety and or cause us to accept our new way of thinking as gospel when, in fact, remember the South Nodes and Sagittarius were being asked to let go of what we think is the truth for not only ourselves but for everyone, when, in fact, it still needs more concrete testing and empirical proof. Also, watch out during this transit, um, which, again, is fleeting, for impulsivity and impatience, especially around travel now, as a faster-moving mind can translate into too rapid movement that results in an error in judgment, which in turn can result in an accident. Okay, so remember that the sun will follow in Venus's and Mercury's footsteps and can join Uranus also, but not until April 30th. So again, tuck away in the back of your mind the fact that this particular energy will be waxing at the April 26th Scorpio new moon, but that the overall energy of change, particularly sudden or unexpected change, is in the air all of this week and next week. Now, the Sun-Uranus conjunction on May on April um, 30th in Taurus can likewise bring disruptions to our daily routine. Whether these interruptions are deemed positive or negative is really dependent upon how each of us views it. However, what's most important to understand is that something deep inside wants change, whether that's fleeting or longer lasting change, and that inner planets which move quickly, again, like I said before, often trigger events into happening. So the sun in mundane astrology represents the king, the president, the prime minister, the dictator, or any other leader, which is something I pointed out last week. 
And this particular Sun conjunct Uranus aspect may well bring a sudden change to one of these folks' orientation, particularly related to security. So Venus is Taurus, transited now by both the Sun in the short term and Uranus over the longer term. And remember, Uranus remains in Taurus until he first dips his toe into Gemini in July 2025. So we have quite a ways to go with this energy. May result in the unexpected actions of others changing or modifying. Well, their unexpected actions will change or modify our own attitude. Or our own actions, which are unplanned, might surprise others. Either way, so in, you know, however this energy manifests for each of us individually, such actions are the result of our resistance to change over the long term. In one case, it's being our resistance to change would be projected back to us through uh, sudden movements or changes with others. And um, if it's not repressed, then we're going to make the changes ourselves. So with the sun, Mercury, Venus, and Uranus all now in Taurus, Uranus reminds us yet again that the only constant is change. However, one of the problems here and this is something that will come to the fore also, or is slowly coming to the fore right now as we approach the Scorpio full moon on the 26th, Taurus hates change. <laughs> because, well, once you discover what pleases you, remember Taurus is an is a energy of the physical body's five senses, and what pleases the senses is what we tend to value in our lives. So when we figure out what we value, why the hell would we want to change it? <laughs> I don't know. I speak from personal experience because I'm a Taurus son. So trust me, I know. So a lot of Tauruses get that reputation of being stubborn, you know, um, and dig our heels in, our little hoofies in like the bull, right? Because we don't want anything to change. We're very happy in our little, I always use Ferdinand the bull, right? Very happy in our little garden, our picket fence. We watch the, the universe go by outside our picket fence and we under the shady tree and we're eating our little apples and, you know, whatever. It's like, you know, the tail's wagging to get rid of the fleas and flies. And we're very happy, we're very content. The key word, actually, for Taurus energy is serenity. So if you can conjure up in your mind's eye, and this is something good to meditate on, too, <clears throat> as we're talking about Mars and Cancer, right? Um, it's like, what makes us feel calm and serene? And that's why water, especially when Mars is in Cancer, is a good good thing to be around, whether we're taking baths and showers, whether we're walking by a lake or a river or a beach, or, you know, um, I don't know, walking the neighborhood by someone's pool, although none of them have water in them yet. But you know what I'm saying. So anyway, back to the fact that Taurus hates change. <clears throat> well, Taurus hates change, but the universe hates stasis or stagnation. And it's also antithetical to Pluto's long-term desire to prod us to evolve. Now, evolution requires adaptation. And in order to adapt, we have to change. When we refuse to do so, the universe begins to consider us obsolete. And though it can take quite a while, Pluto is a slow-moving planet and a slow-moving energy, eventually he's going to count us out and cause or let us become extinct therefore change particularly in our attitudes around what it is we truly value most must evolve um, or must evolve us to ensure our personal survival now often it, it takes sudden unexpected shocking events to move us from a stubbornly comfortable status quo to one that causes change in our lives. Think about Ferdinand, and now there's an earthquake, and all of a sudden he's got to get up, you know, if he doesn't want to be swallowed um, by the earth or into the earth if it opens up right next to him because it's an earthquake. He's got to move, right? So he had no intention of moving, but the outside energy said, oh, sorry, bud, time to, you know, time to hoist that weight up on those four hoofies and, you know, take a little trot somewhere else. <laughs> now, I'm going to go into politics for a second, but I have a gut feeling that, you know, though I could be entirely wrong, of course, that um, we could see, and I know I'm kind of abruptly switching topics, so forgive me, but this is where my mind went or goes. We could see Russia's massing of troops on the Ukrainian border right now, right? Mars is, in, is about to go into cancer. 
Cancer is the homeland also. The moon is the people in mundane astrology. And Mars is action, of course. So fighting, because Russia has been infiltrating Ukraine for years and years and years since the breakup of the USSR circa 1991. Uh, my mother's aide was from Georgia, which borders the Ukraine on the other side, I think, and she says that the same thing has been happening there. There are a lot of indigenous Russians living in the Ukraine, and they pledge their allegiance to Russia, not to the Ukraine. So we're seeing this massing of troops. I think this morning I saw it was 100,000 extra troops. They've already been in the Ukraine. I read a story last year that said they actually rebuilt a bridge, which was the major pathway through the waterway. The bridge uh, was there, but they reduced its height so that the Ukrainian-built ships couldn't go under the bridge anymore. So they stymied Ukrainian traffic you know, shipping trade, which, you know, much of the world still uses. So it's pretty fascinating when you think about it. But they're clearly antagonizing in the name of saying this is our homeland, not yours. Um, also, Putin made an announcement yesterday that, you know, I think Biden has said that he called him recently and told him, you know, quit screwing around. You know, we're not going to take this the way that Trump did. And he told everybody yesterday, mind your own business or else. And so we have this this potential with the sun coming to Uranus of a sudden shift of priorities, you know, out of necessity, um, which is to say around what we value most in U.S. foreign policy now. I mean, bear in mind that Biden just gave a date to remove uh, U.S. troops from Afghanistan. So if the basic philosophy is moving in the direction of, yeah, let's get out and let's not wield our power in other nations anymore, it didn't turn out to be fortuitous for us, we could do a complete turnaround and say, oh, okay, we're in NATO, right? And during Trump's era, we abandoned NATO. And now we're back in it or, you know, we never left NATO, but I mean, you know, we, we, we want to ally with the other nations to stop Russia. Okay. So now same mindset, same thread, different topic, one to which people will probably more easily relate is that the entire world became cognizant of justice served when the thrice guilty verdict in Derek Chauvin's trial was broadcast to the world two days ago on April 20th. I don't think you can get a clearer picture of changed society, say changed societal values than that. I challenge you to come up with one. So instead of expected riots, which, you know, they had called in all the National Guard, particularly in Minnesota, Minneapolis, we got unexpected displays of happiness, joy, and physical expressions through hugs, happy dances, and, you know, joyous speeches and more since then. So now, as we wax toward the April 26th Scorpio new moon, it pays to keep in mind all these energies and how they've manifested. But we see also another set of energies emerging that's sure to affect many of us soon. Um, as on late April 24th and early 25th, again, depending on your time zone, Venus will square Saturn in Aquarius, and this will be followed by Mercury square to Saturn later on the 25th also. So when Venus squares Saturn, we can have the tendency to feel lonely, isolated, uh, lonely alone, right? Isolated, self-critical, pessimistic, or depressed. And it's important to remember now that this represents an opportunity to evaluate our relationships, that's Venus, through a quid pro quo lens. And Saturn represents the process of maturation. So in other words, are our partnerships all give and no take or vice versa? I mean, I've seen cases of partnerships where it's all take and no give, right? If one party is giving all and the other, then the other has to be taking. But even sometimes when people are in an uneven relationships, they don't stop to think about um, the revelation can be that they're really not happy in the relationship because they are doing all the taking. You know, so it's not always a matter of, you know, somebody being an SOB. Sometimes it's just that that's the way the combination of energies between two people can go. 
and becoming cognizant of that now is what this aspect is about. So this energy or this aspect will shine a light on how we truly feel about these things now um, because we're called to evaluate our partnerships under the cold, hard light of day, which is to say sans emotion. It's okay to view relationships now less romantically and more from a practical point of view and to question whether we're getting out of them as much as we're putting in or vice versa. And if not, it may be time for serious or rational thought about making some adjustments. Now, again, I go back to the whole COVID-19 past year, right? It is possible that, you know, many of us have um, left relationships. Again, recognize the Uranus and Taurus, the shift in our value system and the polarization in the collective. I know I've stopped talking to certain people because just because, I mean, you know, some families are still fighting. Some are, are um, no longer talking. We may have surrounded ourselves in what they call the echo chamber with people who agree with us. But there's no judgment in that. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. But what I'm saying is that we can notice it. Right. So if we eliminate from our lives people who are all taken, no give, or also it can make us aware of our inability to receive, right? Don't we deserve to receive in a relationship? Then it's just time for some serious or rational thought about maybe making some adjustments adjustments to our um, existing relationships. And the way that we might be able to do that a little more consciously is to look at What's happened to some of our other relationships, you know, not necessarily significant others um, or family, but over the past year, you know, what's starting to get on to be more like, yeah, a year and a quarter, I think. But um, but we're still in April. So um, anyway, remember, too, that Venus squared Pluto at the last lunation and that that asked us to strengthen our own inner sense of empowerment, particularly in relationships because that's what Venus is. So Venus, when she squares Saturn, calls us to utilize this newfound empowerment to push back against the judgment of others or the beliefs of others, particularly those who hold some measure of authority over us. Now, Mercury squared to Saturn comes April 25th and allows us um, a sharp mind for details and for heavy, concentrated mental work. It's actually a good time to work alone now. And that's my birthday. <laughs> I'll be celebrating it on Saturday, I think. <laughs> my son and his girlfriend are here from Boston. So I'm like, they were going to stay till Monday, but she was really unhappy about that. She's a lovely Capricorn who reminds me of both my mother, who was a Capricorn, and my ex-husband, who is a Capricorn, who love, love, love to work. So all you guys out there who love to work. And and we went out for a walk, uh, my son and, and his girlfriend and I, and I said, um, you know, I was thinking about it. Are you staying till Monday? Because, you know, I said to my son, because you feel obligated to stay through my birthday. And he was like, yeah. And I said to his girlfriend, but you would rather go home on Sunday, right? Because I already knew he had told me she likes to take Sunday to prepare for Monday, which is exactly what my mother used to do. My mother used to talk about Sunday night dread, you know, that feeling in the pit of your stomach, you got to get up and go to work and get ready for the whole week and all that. Although she loved to do it, right? So don't get me wrong. It's a conundrum, but whatever. So I said to them, listen, let's just celebrate my birthday on Saturday. You know, we'll have dinner Saturday night. Maybe we can do something quick in the morning on Sunday. And then you guys head home. And um, in doing so and recounting, you know, my mother's experience, everybody, it was like they all breathed a sigh of relief. So I was like, it's fine. <laughs> so I will be with... <laughs> For the rest of the day on my birthday, I don't have any plans to party. That's what I'm trying to say. So anyway, um, but it's a good time for, as I said, sharp, detailed mental work. And it can, but it can also lead us to think more narrowly, which could lead us to be more pessimistic and definitely more myopic now. So again, if we use this energy to work alone and concentrate on practical matters, we can avoid the kind of narrow mindset that leads to negative thoughts. And that's probably not going to be 
a very long lasting energy because Mercury will conjoin Venus later on April 25th. And that's when we can recognize we have the ability to combine our intellect with beauty as a way to express our need for both equality, balance, and harmony now. So, in other words, doing something creative, you know, whether it's writing or painting or singing or dancing or whatever, might be the way to handle the... um the Mercury, the Venus and the Mercury square to Saturn, you know, the hell with everyone else. I'm just, again, Mars Cancer going to go inward, going to follow my intuition. And I'm just going to know that um, shortly after these two aspects on the 24th, 25th, later on the 25th, I'm going to be waxing into the culmination of Mercury, Venus. Now I can express it. So what I couldn't express, put into words, had trouble communicating, particularly verbally, while Mercury was squaring and Venus was squaring Saturn, Mercury's conjunction to Venus sort of might open up the floodgates a little and let us say, you know, okay, screw it. I, I you know, you guys do your own thing and I'm just going to be a little hermit today. And, uh, you know, or if the weather's nice, I'm going to take a walk by myself or, you know, it doesn't mean you can't, it, there's no can and can't. I mean, you could also, you know, Saturn's also a mentor. You would talk to someone that you respect. Just don't let the conversation get you down. You know, it's where you concentrate on all the things you didn't do as opposed to the things you did do. So a gratitude list is always a good idea, right? (laughs) Okay. So, but here's the other rub, all right? As we move into the Scorpio full moon, which will occur the next day on the 26th, and this occurs at seven degrees and six minutes of the Scorpio Taurus polarity, moon and Scorpio, sun and Taurus, at 8.32 p.m. Pacific, and 11.32 p.m. Eastern, we're waxing toward both the sun's April 30th meetup with Uranus, remember, and the sun's square to Saturn on May 3rd. So again, you see Venus square Saturn, Mercury square Saturn, and then the sun. Just like Venus squared Pluto, and then Mercury squared Pluto, and then the sun squared Pluto, And now it's going to happen with, and also the conjunctions that I just talked about, Venus and Mercury and um, and the Sun. So be aware that these are all part of the same cycles, right? And the squares to Saturn now occur during the waning portion of this monthly lunar cycle. So it's telling us we need to release our comfortable reliability on all that we thought would remain permanent in our lives, and that's the Taurus sun, and embrace transformation as a means to stave off evolution. Remember, if we don't adapt to change, then we'll ultimately become extinct. You can use that as a larger metaphor and bring it into our personal lives. This Scorpio full moon's pending squares to both the sun, uh, of both the sun and moon, because they're going to be at seven degrees, right? And Saturn is at 12 Aquarius. So as the full moon occurs, the moon and the sun will both be waxing into their squares. Obviously, I just said that the sun is not going to perfect his square until May 3rd. Mercury and Venus will have already, I'm sorry, yeah, Venus and Mercury squares will already have occurred. The energy is still in flow. Um, The moon will will, uh, square Saturn shortly after because she moves so fast. But it, again, it lets, it asks us to let go, it's a full moon, of what we think provides us comfort and security. And here I mean the outer trappings, because Saturn is related to success, uh, to achievement, to notoriety, not notoriety, because that's actually a negative thing, but um, to, to being someone out in the world, to reputation and resources that come from these things, you know, money, prestige, power. And to find true inner empowerment through, um, well, true inner empowerment and a sense of security, right? Because we were asked to deal with the empowerment issue at the Aries new moon. We've been growing that as the moon's waxing. Now when it's starting to wane at, after the full moon, we need to let go. So we want true empowerment and as, and to develop by letting go of other people's, um, things. Other people's attitudes, beliefs, um, authority figures that have taken care of us, we, we need to develop our own sense of inner security if 
everybody disappears from our lives tomorrow, can we still survive? The answer is always yes. But the question is, do we believe that? Now, transformation is going to happen regardless. Um, and I go back to Jungian astrologer Liz Green's um, lines where she says, you know, and this is about Pluto, but the full moon is in Scorpio, which is ruled by Pluto, right? Um, she says, you could go easy or you could go kicking and screaming, but either way, you're going to go. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I'm a New Yorker, right? Pluto's, Pluto's Scorpio or Pluto and Scorpio are energies that don't, you know what, around, okay? Um, they don't mess around, all right? They're serious. So, um, so while the Aries new moon asks us to push through and confront our, um, um, individual and collective sense of disempowerment, again, I refer you back to the Derek Chauvin trial, in order to increase our internal sense of empowerment, that's what all the squares of, to Pluto were about. This Scorpio full moon carries the energies of Venus and Mercury squaring Saturn and the waxing square of the sun to Saturn during this waning part of the lunar cycle. And it's punctuated by the Taurus sun's conjunction to Uranus, which completes the buildup of this week's Venus-Mercury-Uranus conjunction. So change is afoot, like it or not. You know, it occurs to me as I'm saying this, it's just very, very simple. Uranus and Taurus, right? Started in spring of 2018, like I said, is going to go until uh, Uranus first dips his toe into Gemini in July of 2025. I do believe he retrogrades back into Taurus again, so there's a period of back and forth. But think about it, right? That energy, Uranus is change. Universe doesn't like stasis. The only constant is change in Taurus. I ain't changing. I'm very comfy here. I like it. Smells nice, feels good, tastes good, <laughs> right? I mean, these are very, very basic Taurian principles, you know? Uh, the, the, the breeze feels nice on my face. I can hear the sounds of people laughing and the birds tweeting, and it's all so present here. I'm very serene. I'm very calm. I'm very, it's very lovely, right? It's harmonious. So when these two come together, why the hell does Taurus want to change? So we know that, you know, those are Taurus's reasons for change. When Uranus is in other signs, they have their reasons for not wanting to change. An air sign is their thought process. Water sign is their emotions, right? Uh, fire sign is slowing down. I don't want to change my direction, my action. I want to keep going this way. Don't tell me, you know, I can't. But in Earth, you know, it's a sedentary kind of energy. So um, there isn't any sign more sedentary i hate to say it but than taurus so look again at the momentousness of what just happened with the Derek chauvin child not to be a dead horse but anyone who's been paying attention to current events over these past few years especially since uranus went into taurus we could talk about a whole host of other things and we have already and that's true Changes in our education system, remote learning, you know, who is in type. But, but look at, Uranus is also about progressing or advancement of humanity as a whole. So in order for humanity as a whole, every human on the face of this earth collectively to continue to evolve, changes must be made in the way that we changes must be made to our routine ways, right? So when we talk about things like systemic racism, we're very comfortable with that, many of us. I'm not trying to indict anyone, especially I'm a white girl from New York, you know. It's like, um, you know, white privilege and stuff like that. A lot of us have had to have that pointed out to us in order to realize that not everybody gets treated the same way. We know this in theory, but we might not know it in our in our everyday physical lives, right? Um, and that's the case when we think about things like driving while black can be a crime, whereas driving by white, and I've witnessed this with my own son. He got into a lot of trouble when he was younger, and the cops always let him go, you know? 
I mean, one time he had to do community service, um, and he's much more mature now, thank God. But the thing is that had he been black um, or even Latino, potentially, um, that might not have been the case. So being aware of that, for those of us who never were before, is a change, right? And this jury's verdict sort of said, okay, look, society has to change because it's for the advancement and the betterment of humanity. And one of the things that has to change is the way we value each other. You know, I grew up um, uh, with a lot of people who now are in their 50s and their 60s and their 70s who still think there are welfare queens. You know, these are the kinds of things that, um, not to get too personal, but they annoy me <laughs> because it's not a Uranian or an Aquarian way to look at things, right? It's like, okay, that was 40 years ago, right? Or 30 years ago. Like, do you think anything's changed? You know, are you still thinking that you are lower middle class when you not only own a six bedroom house with a three car garage on two acres, but you also own a rental property? You know, do you not realize where you fit into the greater whole and how much better you might be doing than you think? You know, and I'm just mentioning because that's kind of the crowd that I've dealt with um, both uh, since really my move 26 years ago to New Jersey. But in any case, which has a lot of expat New Yorkers, but um, particularly from Staten Island and Brooklyn and Queens, it's a slightly different animal from Manhattan. Anyway, I digress and I'm sorry to babble. But um, I just want to point this out, that in the larger scheme of things, right, this is momentous because now in over the past year since George Floyd's murder, we've had everyone out on the streets, all colors, all religions, all genders, all cultures, you know, doesn't matter. There's no difference between us, right? And those who resist the kinds of changes that we are calling for are the ones who will, you know, petrify or um, turn to stone, you know, um, because they're not interested in evolving. And it, it, in order to evolve, we have to have an open mind and allow ourselves to say, oh, look, when I actually think about it, things have changed instead of being Archie Bunker, you know, our whole life, no matter what. So as I said before, while the Aries new moon asked us to push through and confront our individual and collective sense of disempowerment in order to increase our internal sense of empowerment, and that that's what all the squares Pluto are about, and I may be repeating myself, so forgive me, this Scorpio full moon carries the energies of Venus and Mercury squaring Saturn and the waxing square of the sun to Saturn after the fact and during the waning part of the lunar cycle. And in between, it's punctuated by the Taurus Sun's conjunction to Uranus, which completes the buildup of this week's Venus-Mercury-Uranus conjunction. So change is afoot, like it or not. But the squares to Saturn tell us now we're dealing more with Saturnian issues at this lunation than with Saturnian, I'm sorry, than with Plutonic ones. So I've already sort of beaten the dead horse that Pluto's all about inner empowerment. Saturn, however, is more about our belief system and whether or not it stems from the core of our soul, what is our soul's true beliefs, or from outer influences during both this life and past lives. Now, we all have outer influences. It's, it's not, you know, Saturn is, is it, Saturn's a hard taskmaster, as they say. Um, and so none of us escape having come into adulthood with other people's ideas in our heads or other people's belief systems. And that could be on a whole host of different issues. It's a religious, it's political, you know, it's, it's about economics, um, you know, a million different things. And in this day and age, of course, you know, for the last, however, excuse me, number of years, or even when I was young too, about gender, you know, and that kind of stuff. So, um, but Saturn's ultimate desire is maturity. He is pushing us towards maturity. And as I said, when, Mer when Venus and Mercury square Saturn, we can't stay in relationships where we're not being treated fairly or in which we demand but do not receive equality. The Derek Chauvin trial just signaled to us this truth. 
Nor can we dwell in the land of pessimism or too narrow thinking, as that, of course, squelches all hope for intellectual growth. So embracing this change in collective values may help us to understand where we need to bring this energy into our personal domains in order to affect change in our individual spheres of influence. Now, we can release the need to cling to our old values if and when we understand that they no longer serve us going forward. Like I said, things have changed. The universe hates stasis and stagnation, remember? And if we're looking to evolve consciously, it behooves us to recognize this at the Scorpio full moon. Think again, systemic racism. You know, I mean, I said all this, so I'm repeating myself. But this trial's recent verdict, how much more there still is to achieve, accomplish, and fight back against as we move forward. So how we experience and express these squares to Saturn as we wax toward May 3rd, Sun square Saturn remains to be seen. But we know it's, it's going to involve bucking up against authority. And this may take form on the universal collective stage, but on the personal level, we can ask ourselves now, do we gratify or indulge ourselves, or do we understand we have a duty to others? Now, clearly, this raises the specter of COVID-19 vaccination warfare, of misinformation and propaganda so prevalent everywhere you turn, right, at least on social media right now. So clearly, we can protect ourselves first and society second, if we choose to get vaccinated, or we can rebelliously fight City Hall, as my dad used to say. So those who rail against the experts who hail from mainstream science may lead this outer battle and confrontation, which may find its way more prominently into the greater collective by May 3rd. The rest of us, however, may grapple with our own truth by answering the question posed at this time, also by... Um, um, one of the, you know, Saturn, well, what I'm trying to say is that we, we all grapple with this question now. And that's reflected not in this uh, more fleeting uh, Scorpio full moon, but also in the overall year's energy of Saturn square Uranus. Do we adhere to the bureaucracy of society's rules, Saturn, and help the rest of fellow womankind, Saturn and Aquarius, or do we deny any humanitarian impulse more of a, a, a you know, a, for a potential variety of different reasons, and fight authority. The decision, again, is always an individual one. However, this energy is prevalent as we move into the Scorpio full moon energy and throughout at least the first half of its waning cycle, and it gives us much food for thought. Okay, so that's basically it for today, and I'm sorry I didn't make time to get to April 27th's Pluto station retrograde as advertised, but rest assured, Pluto's going to be retrograde in Capricorn until October 6th. So I will be sure to tackle this uh, energy's meaning and purpose probably next week, um, because it'll happen only two days, I think, before next week's show. So I will get to it, I promise you. I won't leave you high and dry. But um, meanwhile, thank you to everyone for joining me today. I do hope that you found the information presented here helpful as you continue your karmic evolution in this lifetime. Please be sure to join me next week on April 29th for another episode of Karmic Evolutions, Astrologically Speaking. Until then, may your journey be filled with karmic healing and the joy of greater consciousness. Namaste. Long ago, before this day's confusion did begin, throughout the stars did we go wandering. Distance was.